In this video, I'll talk about some funky examples with absolute value inequalities and some reasons why you need to make sure you're always thinking about what these statements are telling you rather than just blindly going through the motions. All right, so let's take a look at the first example. Absolute value of 5x plus 8 is less than negative 4. Uh, so maybe you saw in the previous videos that you, when you have less than, the inequality turns into an and inequality. Uh, so maybe you blindly kind of go through the motions of writing this as an and inequality and solving, and you might get some solutions. However, if you're not careful, those solutions might not be correct. So let's take a look at what this statement means. All right, now I always encourage you to kind of draw a picture of what's going on just to get a sense of the meaning behind any inequality or equation. Uh, so let's think about this. This statement tells me that the absolute value of something is less than negative 4. Now remember the definition for absolute value. Absolute value is never negative. Absolute value is never negative. It is either a positive number or it's zero. So it doesn't make sense that an absolute value is equal to a negative number. Now this doesn't say it's equal to a negative number, it says that it's less than a negative number. Now a negative number, if we think about where negative 4 lives on the number line, let's say 0 is here, let's say negative 4 is here, if I'm less than negative 4, less than negative 4 is to the left of negative 4. All the numbers to the left of negative 4 are also negative. So if absolute value is never negative, this statement can't be true ever because absolute value is never less than negative 4 because that would mean it would be another negative number. So this case has no solutions. No matter what I plug in for x, it'll never make this statement true. The absolute value of whatever I put in here will always be either 0 or something bigger than 0. And if I have 0 here, it's not less than negative 4. And if I have something positive here, it's not less than negative 4. There's no solutions. Empty set. Let's take a look at the second example. In the second example, we have absolute value of 3x minus 1 is greater than 0. All right, well, this is a little bit nicer. We know that the absolute value of something can either be equal to 0 or it can be positive. Positive numbers are bigger than zero. Uh, so if I think about this uh, on the number line, normally I would think about the positive and negative of zero, but zero is neither positive or negative. So this picture really means that the expression that I have in here, if it has to have an absolute value bigger than zero, it could live anywhere to the right of zero. So anywhere out here, if this expression lived out here, it would be okay. 3x minus 1 could live there. Um, 3x minus 1 can also live here because when we take the absolute value, it would uh, be bigger than 0. But the only value that doesn't work is 0 itself. We, this expression cannot be equal to 0. Uh, if I wanted to go ahead and uh, write a solution set for this, um, I could think about 3x minus 1 living up here. Uh, so kind of writing, let me write it over here as well. If I write 3x plus uh, minus 1 on this side, that means greater than uh, but not equal to 0. So 3x minus 1 can be bigger than 0. Or 3x minus 1 can be less than 0. It can be less than or it can be greater than, but in neither case can it be equal. All right, so we can solve uh, each of these. Add 1 to both sides. 3x is greater than 1. Divide by 3. x is greater than 1 third. Or solve the other inequality. Add 1 to both sides. 3x is less than 1. Divide by 3, x 
is uh, less than one third. All right, so my solution set now is any value that is bigger than one third, but not equal to one third, or any value that is less than one third, but not equal to one third. So I'm shading all real numbers except for one third. So um, because I have uh, one third not included, I could put an open circle there. You could also put two parentheses going in both directions like that. But with one point just kind of erased, kind of taken out, I like to use the open circle. Uh, so now this um, can be written in set builder notation. I would just kind of write this here as the description, or I could write it as an interval from negative infinity up to one third, parentheses, union, parentheses, one third to positive infinity. And this is an interval that excludes just that one value at one third. Let's take a look at the last two examples. Uh, so here I have 2x plus 6 in absolute value is greater than or equal to 0. Again, I want you to think about the definition of absolute value. Absolute value is what we say non-negative. So it can be positive or it can be equal to 0. That's exactly what this statement is telling us. All right, so this means positive or equal to 0. But this is true all the time. The absolute value of any number, no matter what number I put in here, this is always going to be true. So if this is always true, it doesn't matter what x I plug in, because no matter what x I plug in, if I get any other number, then that's going to be some other real number. And when I take the absolute value, it's either going to be equal to 0 or it's going to be greater than 0. So my solution set would be all real numbers. And I could represent that with the real number symbol or an in interval notation from negative to positive infinity. All right, now that looks similar to our last case. Absolute value of x minus 9 is less than or equal to 0. Um, now less than zero is not possible. We saw that before. We can't have a value that is an absolute value negative. So the less than zero doesn't give us any solutions, but the equal zero does give us solutions. So um, we could think about it this way. So it's not possible for absolute value of x minus nine to be less than zero but we can have absolute value of x minus 9 equal to 0. So it's enough for just to solve that equation. Absolute value of x minus 9 equals 0. Well, that only happens if x minus 9 is 0 itself. And when does that happen? Well, that happens when x is equal to 9. So there's only one value of x that's going to make this statement true, and that's the case where it's equal to 0, and that's x equals 9. We could write that as an interval, by the way, an interval with just one number, bracket 9, comma 9, and then bracket. All right, so again, hopefully these examples kind of really reinforce the fact that you should always be thinking about what a statement is telling you and not just blindly going through the motions of solving and kind of going step one, step two. Because sometimes you could go through those steps, get solutions, and not realize that those solutions don't make any sense.